much radiation. I have to go hurry. All right, Modern Warfare 1, let's go from least importance to most importance. Arcade mode, it's the least important thing in the game. Uh, it sucks, it's not as good as arcade mode in Modern Warfare 3 or even close to as good as um, the co-op missions in Modern Warfare 2. Uh, it's literally just replay the missions on any um, difficulty and get the highest uh, score possible, which is not fun and stupid. Um, and, you know, I feel like they knew that too. <laughs> it's really stupid, just don't even bother with it. Alright, second, you got multiplayer. Um, multiplayer is, you know, very popular still. Well, not very popular, but there's still a lot of people who play it. Um, it is not the most balanced mod Modern Warfare multiplayer. Uh, it's kind of, it kind of gets more balanced as the games goes on. Uh, you know, with Modern Warfare 3 kind of being the most balanced one. And, um, yeah, Modern Warfare 1, it, the multiplayer, ooh boy, you get the Desert Eagle and you win. Because Desert Eagle one-shots people to the body most of the time. And if it doesn't, you can just headshot them, which is not super difficult in this game. Um, and the ADS time on the Deagle is just really good. So, the basic loadout for this game is P90 and Desert Eagle, or if it's allowed in servers, the uh, M4A1 Carbine with a noob tube, which is the technical term for um, that grenade launcher. <laughs> it's not, but it's uh, what a lot of people call it. Um, and basically why you want to use the noob tube in a lot of the Call of Duty games is because it's a really pretty much the most competitive option. Uh, it's kind of just the best option, and I don't really agree with it. I don't like it, but it's the sad fact is is that it just guarantees you a free kill, right? And you know, in certain game modes, it guarantees you two or three uh, free kills because it comes with multiple bullets, right? And especially if you have scavenger on it, it will guarantee you a pretty much unlimited amount of free kills. So you just need to use that if you really if it's allowed, um, you know. And may maybe it's a dumb thing to use or something, but everybody uses it, and it's kind of the meta. Um, this game has kind of turned into a really competitive too. Like, there's a lot of people who are really good at it, so it's not super competitive. I mean, you'll you'll still it, it's still fun while playing it casual. It's just you, you gotta try a little bit to get kills, but you don't have to like play CSGO over there where you're calling out to your team where they are and stuff like that. It's probably in the middle of a very casual game and a very competitive game. It's kind of just like right in the middle where it's, you know, just competitive enough that you can't get kills if you don't actually try, and just not competitive enough to where you're not having to, you know, communicate with your teammates about everything. And, um, community with the with the multiplayer, it's actually a lot nicer than I thought it would be. Um, everybody's really nice, and um, they're just generally very welcoming, even though I was very new to the game. Um, pistols are OP, you know, the met, like the whole game is pretty unbalanced. That's all I really have to say about the multiplayer. You die in like two to three shots, but that's probably a good thing. You shouldn't really have too much uh, time before you die. Uh, the time to kill in the game is really low. I would say probably even lower than Counter Strike and some with some guns like the uh, P90. It kills you within three shots, and the fire rate's crazy. But um, that's basically it for the multiplayer. Um, you have the single player, which is probably going to be the longest part of this review. It is definitely the most important part about really any Call of Duty game, and especially older Call of Duty games, they have really, really fun single players. And the Modern Warfare single player, it opened up the Call of Duty campaign, really, 
like that that trope of Call of Duty campaigns where it's like really linear. Every you get a guy who just blows everything up, right? And that's just like a campaign trope. It kind of opened up that sort of thought, you know. I mean, I'm not talking about like the Doom campaign trope where it's like, yeah, you're a one-man army like fighting a horde of people. No, um, this this campaign trope, if you've ever played a Call of Duty campaign or you've ever heard someone talk about it like this, is that it's it's you know like you're a soldier, you do bad things, these bad things, and it's just been copied so many times throughout the Call of Duty series and throughout the. Um, well, general, you know, game, gaming, uh, sort of thing. I know Spec Ops The Line kind of used it, where it's like, hey, you're a soldier, hey, you did bad things, hey, you're a moral gray area, but, you know, and that's just, and you, and shooting controls and stuff like that. Uh, it works exactly like Modern Warfare 2, and, uh, Modern Warfare 3, I think, is very similar to this game, too, uh, in you know, controls and, and the way the game feels and stuff like that. So just so you know that it's gonna kind of feel in control like that. The veteran mode in this game, the veteran campaign, I, I have played through the entire Modern Warfare 2 campaign on veteran. I haven't done it for Modern Warfare 3 yet, um, but let me tell you, playing Modern Warfare 2 camp, uh, veteran campaign and Modern Warfare 1 veteran campaign Modern Warfare 1 makes me want to jump into a, to a giant toaster and pull the and plug it in, you know? Modern Warfare one 2 campaign, it feels like a baby could play it compared to Modern Warfare 1. I don't know, like, I don't know what the big skill difference is between them, but Jesus. Modern Warfare 1, there's so many parts that seem completely unfair, you know? Um, and especially to when you get towards the end of the game, especially. But at the beginning of the game, there's this part where you go in this, um, this, uh, Humvee, right? And you do a minigun segment. And when you're in a minigun segment, you usually are supposed to feel pretty invincible, right? Yeah, not with this. I was in the minigun, and I think I died, like, five times before I fully realized how hard this was gonna be. Um, and like that, it just like immediately starts shocking your balls with a 12 volt battery, you know, and that's, um, that's, that's just the, the beginning of the game. You go on and it gets harder and harder. Now, good thing you get, I, I got pretty good at the game. I was still learning the, the controls at that point, but, um, you know, later on you have this mission and it was so hard. And I realized that I don't even think it's possible on veteran mode to do it the way that I thought was the only way to do it. So, the way I thought the only way to do this mission, uh, basically it's one of the last missions in the game. Everybody kind of uh, charges and waves, right, with these smoke screens. And um, you can't see them, but they can shoot just like randomly through the smoke and kill you. And they usually can't see through the smoke, so... It's even worse if, if you're close enough to them, they can see through the smoke for some reason. Um, so they have this massive smoke screen and there's like hundreds and hundreds of guys uh, behind it and there's infinite amount of people. And you have uh, a LMG, which by the way, LMGs in this game suck ass. Um, so you have an LMG and a sniper rifle and there's not much you can really do about the enemies coming towards you. So the, the answer to this is to follow a side path that's not mentioned in the game whatsoever, right? It's to the right of the mission and it goes to this little like barn area where you have to just like run down this field that they can still shoot you in and uh, make it to safety. Um, but basically, if you account for all of that, there's four waves of infinitely spawning enemies so you have to, and you have to bypass them while they're still alive um and it's kind of bullshit because you can't just kill all of them and that's the like veteran way to do things when you're playing veteran you just kill all of the enemies move up kill all the enemies move up right and that's kind of against a lot of the call of duty players you know mindset and it definitely was against my mindset when i originally started playing veteran on i think black ops 2 which is a vastly inferior game to this one. 
Um, but yeah, like I, I wasn't uh, fully aware of that, and then I got into it, and I ended up beating the veteran campaign on Black Ops 2 eventually. It took a long time though, because I didn't quite understand what, uh, how veteran really worked. But um, veteran on this game, you you can't do that with these infinitely spawning waves because you have four minutes to beat the entire four or five waves of infinitely spawning people. Uh, so basically what the strat is, is that you kill a few people, bolt it to the next place, kill a few more people that are shooting at you, bolt it to the next place, and then I ended up skipping the last wave because it wasn't, like, super close to where I was at that point. So I was able to avoid it and just rush into the helicopter at the end of the mission and dip out of there real fast. But, um, that, that, that was a, that was an okay mission. After that, though, you spawn in this, like, tiny cave, and this is, I believe, the last mission in the game, minus the Mile High Club, which takes, holy shit, forever on Veteran, if you really want to beat it. I think I actually spent, like, I don't know, over an hour on it, I believe. I, I have no idea. It was so stupid. Um, but I'll tell you about that one later. That comes after this mission. So this mission right here... You have infinitely spawning people, I believe. I didn't actually test it, uh, but I believe there's infinitely spawning people coming from left and right just out of your view, and they converge into the middle path and shoot you. So the thing with these timed missions, a lot of the time with these timed missions, um, is that you want to... So w with normal missions and veteran non-timed ones, what your plan is is your plan is to sit back, kill all of the enemies, and then move up, do the same thing, right? It'll, it takes a long time. You, you probably will see that in the video in the background. Um, but, so your, your plan with veteran is usually just to take as much time as possible. But the way you beat veteran missions that are timed, or veteran missions that have unlimited uh, spawning people, is you run as fast as you can, usually. That's what I ended up doing. You run as fast as you can forward, try to make as much ground as possible so they stop spawning infinitely, and then shoot the enemies that are left, right? And uh, this strategy works, but it's incredibly inconsistent. So what I do is I just run in there, um, and I'll, I'll come up with like the perfect strat um, for the last mission with the big cave of two infinitely spawning people left and right. What I did is uh, my strategy was run down the stairs, chuck a grenade as soon as possible. Everybody starts running away from a grenade once it's dropped so they don't shoot you. The two people who are standing in the hallway just about to kill you don't shoot you. Uh, then I throw another grenade to make uh, this other guy. So I go to the right, right? I throw a flash grenade right after I throw the original grenade. So I throw the original grenade, they run away, I throw a flash grenade, it bounces off the wall. I go to the right, I look away from the flash grenade, I sh uh, and then I turn the corner and knife the guy in the corner who hid from the flash grenade. And then I continue going forward. Um, there's this other guy who's to the right, just like um, I'm in the right hallway now. And this guy turns the corner, and I knife him as soon as possible, and then there's this, like, long angle where I can aim down the infinitely spawning spawns, so they'll stop infinitely spawning, and you can continue going now. Uh, but basically, it's all re that entire strategy is all reliant that my bots, the people on my team, like Captain Price, actually are able to kill anybody. It's so stupid. <laughs> like... He just, it's just completely reliant on my, on my teammates, which my teammates are bots, so it's not really gonna be super, uh, reliable, but that's what I ended up doing, and, um, I made it, I made it to the second checkpoint four times before it actually decided to save the checkpoint, and I didn't even know there was a checkpoint there, so I thought there were, like, two segments that had both, um, so the first one had three total infinitely spawning enemy parts, the second segment had one infinitely spawning enemy part that I could notice. So, you have 
you know, he have basically four waves of infinitely spawning enemies, and the last wave is a massive room that makes it, like, really easy for them to just shoot you, because there's basically no cover. Um, so I, I was pissed that there was no save point, and then I realized the fifth time I died in that second part, the fifth time I died there, I was like, holy shit, there was a save here the whole time. I was more mad than I was happy, because the fact is, is that I made, I made it to that room on, like, my third try. So, uh, over time, it became, like, 50 or something tries on that mission to get past that hallway with the three infinitely spawning pools, right? But on the third try, I made it past that three infinitely spawning pools for the first time, and nothing happened. And then it took like 12 more tries to get another chance at getting the checkpoint, and still nothing happened. And I didn't know, I thought that there, there just wasn't any checkpoint there, so I was really pissed. Um, this doesn't really say anything about the game. It just says that it might be a bit inconsistent, uh, so just know that. I, I'm not sure if um, that really changes anything about this review, honestly. It is a really good game, um, but th there's there's a lot of bullshit in it. Let me tell you about Mile High, because Mile High is kind of a, th a thing in every single Modern Warfare game, uh, where it's basically just, so in this game it's an after credits scene. Right. I don't know about the other Modern Warfare's. I think in Modern Warfare 2 it was also a after credits, but in Modern Warfare 3 it was a co-op mission. And I believe in Modern Warfare 2 it was also a co-op mission and after credits. Um, but either way, beating it on vet, vet wow, beating it on veteran is just stupid. Let me tell you. You have one minute to take out about 20 people, um, and that doesn't sound too bad, but you have one minute and you have a gun that has 30 bullets total, so you, and you have to cover, I think it was about five, I don't know, it was a couple hundred meters, um, and it, it's really hard to just move that amount of, um, space in that amount of time. There's two floors of enemies, and if you don't use grenades very well, like, it's absolutely impossible. I didn't end up, I didn't use grenades in the first part, and I was like, damn, I'm always like seven seconds short. I'm not even close. But then I started using grenades, and then it was like, oh yeah, okay. Flash grenades just kind of make it to where you can run past all the enemies. Um, so it, it's it's really really hard even when you can run past all the enemies like I did, and um, yeah, I, I don't know if you buy this game. Good luck beating Mile High on Veteran if you if you even dare to play the game on Veteran. Um, I do recommend this game. I would give it a six out of ten total, um, just because. Like, I, I, I originally wanted to give it a 5 out of 10, but it's really better than that. Um, it just left a sour taste in my mouth after, like, trying Mile High for, like, an hour or two. It was really pissed me off. Um, but, yeah, it, it was just a whole thing. And, uh, I, I do recommend the game, 6 out of 10. It's a good game. I actually really like to play the to get the highest score I can on um the pits right so this pit was pretty good it wasn't the best one i think modern warfare 2 has by far the best pit um but yeah it's just it's just a really good game i would recommend you get it if you can find it for a cheap price you're really only going to play the single player but good luck with good luck with playing uh veteran if you dare see you guys